Hi, I'm going to do a tutorial today on setting up RetroArch from scratch. I know a few people have problems with it and I just thought I'd do a quick tutorial on setting it up on an Android device. I'm going to be using a Nvidia Shield TV Pro, but any Android device should be pretty much the same settings. I'm going to be using a nightly build, but you can use the Play Store version, they're almost identical in setting. We'll go to install retroarch i'm side loading it i'm just going to I've just uploaded it at the apk file to uh, my google drive i'm just going to install it that way mine's a uh, nightly version from the first of march again um, you can use the google play store version they're more stable than the ones i'm going to use now the nightly version might have a few bugs and things but um done let's go to my menu now should have appeared in my apps and there we go so as you can see it's completely fresh installed there's nothing been modified in any way shape or form there's no cores or anything in it yet so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to change this menu from how it is now to um, a different one one because i prefer the, the other one and number two because a couple of calls weren't working properly with this menu about a month ago so just to be on the safe side i'm changing the menu driver to rgui so all i've done is gone to driver down to menu driver i moved it to the right and so i've got to rgui and then i'm backing out of there and then the next thing i'm going to do is going to go to configuration i'm going to go to configuration per core because any settings I make on any of the cores I download to emulate systems, I want them setting specific for that system. I don't want the Game Boy settings on the, the, the Mega Drive um, system or wh whatever like. So, and then I'm just going to back out of here. I'm going to quit RetroArch and then them settings should be saved. So when I start it up now, as you can see, the menu's changed and go to settings, configuration. It will say configuration per core is on. So right, the next thing we need to do, we need some cores. So as you can see, there's no cores there whatsoever. At the bottom, it says 1.3.0, no core. So what we need to do is go to online updater, go to core updater, and because today we're using the Game Boy, I'm going to download one of the Game Boy cores, which I'm going to use the, uh, the Gambat one. So I'm going to click on that, and that's it the core is downloaded so now we back out and back out and then go to load core you'll see that we've now got a core in our system again if we wanted to do a different system go to online update or go to core updates or um go to genesis so we click genesis and that's downloaded some of them are bigger than the others so it might take a little bit longer to download but it only take um a minute if 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 that now we go to load core you'll see game boy and the genesis you can download every single core if you want if that's what you wish to do it's completely up to you so what we'll do now is we're going to click on the game boy core now at the bottom as you can see it says 1.3.0 and then it has gambat b0.50 which means the core loaded into the system now and i want to click load consent and I want to go to my ROM, so I'm going to go select file. I go to directory. So wherever your ROMs are stored, you need to direct it to go to there now. So mine's in the external hard drive. So ROMs, and I'm going to do Super Mario World, uh, Super Mario Land, uh, just to demonstrate today. There we go. As you can see, that's it. Press start, off I go. I've not had to mess about with any of the buttons whatsoever. Everything's pre configured for the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, I, I use, do use a Nexus 9 with an um, OTG cable and a PlayStation 2 controller with a PlayStation 2 adapter. Again, the, the buttons are pre configured as soon as I plug that in, it just they all work. If you are using a touch screen, you can use the touch screen display as I've seen on the screen now. But as I'm not using a touch screen, I'll just show you how to get rid of them. If you are using a touch screen and the controller, you could either use press the 
little space invader symbol in the top center of the screen or you can press like the back button or a button on, on your uh, controller to get to the menu i'm going to because i'm using the nvidia shield i'm going to click on the green triangle which will take me to this menu and i'm going to go back i'm going to go settings i'm going to go to on screen overlay and i'm just going to flick that to off for the time being and then go back 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 up to quick menu and resume content and there we go as you can see it's completely disappeared now the reason i've chose to use the game boy today as the demo is purely because of the i want to incorporate my own overlay to it because i, I don't particularly like the white I, I i'm an old school gamer and I, I i own a game boy and i like the the nice green tinge on on the display and this like white and black and gray isn't my cup of tea so now i'll show you how to do that so go back into this menu by pressing the green triangle cause it's on the nvidia shield again which find out whichever button takes you back to this menu and then click back again and now we're going to go to settings and back to on screen overlay and i'm going to click that to on and now to overlay preset it says at the moment it says retro pad i'm just going to click in that the two dots at the bottom top of the screen will take your you keep pressing it until you find your root directory of your device and then i'm going to take it to the where my board is at this point which is here i'll include this file so that should be set now so you go to again to on screen overlay all i've done is click on it and they uh, as you can see overlay preset now says gb again I'll, I'll include this file at the bottom of the uh, link to it in the description so let's just show you one more thing overlay scale as you can see is 1.00 i'm not messing about with them if you want to make the overlay larger or smaller you could completely do whatever you want but you'll have to um, adjust the video settings as of what i'm going to show you now to, to fit the overlay once it's on the screen so i'll just show you the overlay before i mess about with the video settings so we go to quick menu now zoom content we've got our game boy overlay the only problem being is it's covering half the screen so but as you can see the difference there with the green makes it more completely like the original game boy so what we need to do now is adjust the video settings so again we're going to go back out into the retro art menu there we go i'm going to go back again i'm going to go to settings this time i'm going to go to video i'm going down to aspect ratio index as at the moment it says core provided i'm just going to move it to the right one and it says custom and now i'm going to mess about with the custom viewpoints so viewports even and the first one i want is 636 so as you can see if we increase the number it pushes the display to the right if it in, um, decrease it it takes it left so left takes it left and push it to the right increasing the number in fact um moves it to the right so we want 636 again if you if you do adjust the overlay preset scale from what it currently is which is one pot uh one for one you'll on on here it will just be trial and error until you get it uh spot on so as i say i i have a game boy and i i don't mind playing it on a small screen i like to I would like it to be as, as close to the real Game Boy as possible. I and now we're going to do the viewpoint Y, which is going to take it up and down. So as you can see, it's at zero at the moment, which means it's on the top, touching the top of the screen. As I increase it, it lowers it down. So higher you go, the lower down it goes. The lower the number is, the higher 
the display or goal. So we want this at two fifth there. Don't worry about messing about with the settings in RetroArch. You, I'll, I'll before at the end of the video, I'll show you uh, just a quick way to back up your configuration. So two fifth there, and now the width is six four seven. Yeah, yeah, I'll just show you how to, at the end, like literally like this configuration file. So if you do mess anything up, you've, you've always got a backup or you, you just com completely delete it and start again. I When I first started messing about with RetroArch, I was messing it up like every couple of minutes, like messing about with the settings and stuff. I just used to delete it and start again. So it's no bigger. Obviously, a lot of the other systems that you're going to be playing, like Mega Drive or whatever, the the setting, the screen settings are going to be fine. You don't really need an overlay for them, unless you want to play it on a Game Boy bezel or whatever. So you can adjust the screen to make it like less imperfect using shaders and things like that. But I'm not going to go into that today with this video. If you do what um, know about other if you're struggling on bits and bobs on RetroArch that you've seen people do and I know how to do them, just put it in the comments and I'll, I'll try and do a video on, on that specific thing. So at the moment, I'm just currently trying to do uh, show people how, how to set up the different systems just to get them basically playing. Once you've done this once, by the way, you, um, it'll be saved, so you don't have to mess about it again unless you choose to choose, use a different thing. So now the fourth one, the viewpoint at port high is 58, sir. So viewport X is 636, viewport Y is 250, viewport width is 647, and the last one, the viewport height should be 58, sir. If you do decide to use other bezels and stuff as well, I'll just show you a quick little trick in a minute. Five eight, uh, I'm just back out there now. Uh, if you go on the on-screen overlay, it, as you can see, the opacity is at 0.70, and that's so you can actually see where the uh, edge of the picture is. So if, if you do have a different bezel and the screen's not matching up, if you leave the opacity as it is, you'll be able to see the screen come through, which will help you adjusting the settings. So just back out of here, back out of there. I'm just going to click Save Current Configuration. There we go. Saved. And now I'm going to click Quick Menu and Resume Content. And there you go. How tricks that look. Honest to God, it is so easy to use RetroArch. It's as simple as hard as you want to make it, basically. You can just basically, as, as I've shown you, download the core, get the game from playing, and that's that's you, basically. Or you can just mess about with it, as I've just shown you. So, what I'll do now is I'll just back out of here, and I'll back out of there. Just quit RetroArch and now I'll just load it again just to double check them settings are saved just to show you. So, we're going to do load content this time. I'm not going to load a core straight off, I'm going to click select core, uh, select file and detect core. So, I'm going to go to my ROMs again. Again, the, you can store your ROMs wherever you want to store them. Um, Uh, 
and there you go. How easy is that? So simple. What I will show you now is just how to back it up, basically. So again, I'll just back out of here. Um, back, quick, retro arc. I'll show you where the configuration file is, just in case you do want to play about with it a little bit. So, ES File Explorer. Go to... This is, yes, File Explorer uh, Explorer Pro. Uh, there is a free version if you just want to navigate menus. It's, I, I, it's probably the best File Explorer out there. So I'm just going to go to SD card. So I've gone to device. You can, you can go home, I think, actually, home. And then, yeah, if you start off, just click on the home file on the left-hand side. Click on Android. As you can see, I've got my own configuration files from retro i just dumped them there before um click on data com dot retro arc and then files there you go there's your settings for your game boy And here's your RetroArt core options, RetroArt configuration file. So if you just copy, click on these and copy and paste them somewhere else in your device. And then if you do mess up, you can just obviously just copy um, copy and paste them back in and overwrite the ones that are in there when you, when you do a fresh install again. Or if you mess everything up, just obviously you don't even have to do a fresh install. You just put... Just copy and paste these back over and over, write whatever file you've got in here, basically. So they're just in the files folder. So that's your lot. Thanks for watching.